Good evening, everyone. This is Mark O'Malley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 9th, 2020, recorded around 6.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look out in the tropics right now, we have Tropical Storm Renee, which is out here across the far eastern Atlantic Basin right now. You can see that after weakening to a tropical depression after passing the Cabo Verde Islands, now that it has significantly cleared those islands, it is starting to intensify further and is expected to become the sixth named hurricane of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. You can see pretty clearly here that we have well-established a traverse banding and outflow on the northern side. It is still restricted a little bit on the far eastern side, probably because we have some easterly shear that's being impinged on our storm. Not a lot though, uh, but the outflow you can see is being restricted on that side. It, it doesn't have a full expanse, uh, but it is starting to kind of dive into the eastern quadrant. So we will likely start to see the storm intensify. And again, it is expected to be a hurricane over the next few days. And then Tropical Storm Paulette here again is battling some very strong here. And again, we can kind of see that here on the model, not only do we have dry air, but we have shear, our exposed, uh, partially exposed low level center of circulation is here with all the thunderstorm convection being blown up to the north. That's because we have some southwest, uh, south to southwesternly shear being impinged on our storm right now. And that is significantly degrading the presentation, but sustained winds remain at around 60 miles per hour. But once again, it is expected to start weakening uh, as the shear will only increase for out the next about 48 to 72 hours before finally decreasing once again. So this is the forecast here for Tropical Storm Paula. And unlike a couple of days ago and even yesterday, now there's a little bit more of a concern for a land threat potential to Bermuda. Again, this is still several days out. And again, this you know cone here represents the possible locations of where the center could be. And usually these are within roughly at about 170 to 200 nautical miles of each other. So while this, uh, where these kind of black uh, S symbols are, these the tropical storm locations of where the center could be. Now the shear will start to let up uh, really beyond uh, you know the next uh, four to five days. The shear will start to let up and our storm is expected to once again re-intensify uh, into a strong tropical storm with sustained winds of 65 miles per hour near Bermuda. Now this is uh, all kind of assuming the fact that Paulette actually does survive and not weaken further over the next several days, especially as we get some strong shear to really be impinged. And once again, that's why our storm is going to start moving more westernly here because the lower level steering flow is out of the westernly direction here. And that is going to be causing our storm to, uh, as it weakens, it's going to feel more of this low level flow in the atmosphere, pushing it further off towards the west here. And then eventually as it starts to re-intensify, it does gain some latitude before maybe once again, uh, coming up within a blocking pattern with this high pressure intensifying over. And we may get the storm to come close enough to Bermuda. So for folks obviously there, this is something to watch here over the next few days as this could be a land concern for Bermuda now, it is too early to determine and speculate what impacts this may have. Again, you know, this is moving a little bit more westernly than we've seen in the past couple of days, but I'm not significantly concerned about this having any threat to the United States East Coast at this time. Again, it is best to be monitoring things if you live along the East Coast, but there should not be a threat as it seems like we're going to get a pretty strong weakness in the ridge and our storm is probably going to be able to turn up probably near or just east or west of Bermuda, give or take maybe about 100 miles or so. Uh, but it's probably not going to make it all the way to the east coast here to bring impacts. You're probably not going to see that. Now, is there a possibility? Yes, there's always a possibility, but I do not suspect that we're going to start to see that uh, be the trend. So let's hope that continues. But again, for folks in Bermuda, you do need to be monitoring the progress here of Tropical Storm Paulette.
Now, a tropical storm rain, again, maximum sustained winds remain near 40 miles per hour. It did struggle throughout this time period. Now, the forecast path has changed a little bit as well. You remember uh, from even yesterday, this was expected to kind of move up something like this and maybe kind of come out and recurve like that. The pattern has changed once again, and we're not going to see this significant looping effect here. Uh, instead, we're likely to see this west and northwest trend continue before finally moving west-northwest, weakening as it moves north because cooler sea surface temperatures in this region. Uh, but again, this is not likely to be much of a threat to land. This should kind of remain out to sea, although it may kind of meander somewhere uh, out in this general vicinity in here, kind of may meander around. Uh, but we're not expecting this to come further west or turn towards the Azores right now. Again, this should just kind of be a meandering storm, maybe kind of racking up those ace points, the accu accumulated cyclone energy. Uh, index, but again, other than that, we're not likely to see any land threats to that. So we're not going to be discussing Renee that much. Now, else across the other uh, tropics here, what what else is going on? We do have a couple of other things. Investeri 94L, which does only have now a 30% chance of developing into a tropical cyclone. Again, this is producing a very disorganized area of showers and thunderstorms. We will have to watch for the mid-level center of 94L to maybe drift across the Bahamas and Florida then into the Gulf of Mexico where some of the ensemble members of the Euro and some other various models are trying to forecast some development over the next several days but again not likely to see anything at the current moment. Of course here's our two tropical storms and we also have yet another tropical wave coming off that is likely to develop. This wave is very uncertain and where it could go. Again, anywhere within this area is the general formation area right now. And again, generally this is going to be moving off towards the west, but could maybe make a turn off towards the west-northwest late in the forecast period. But we'll really have to monitor here over the next several days because that is very uncertain. We have more waves even coming off behind that. We'll be coming off at a little bit of a lower latitude, so these may have more of a chance uh, to be of land concern, but again, right now, there's nothing set in stone. Now, if we look here at Tropical Storm Paulette, again, this is the uh, early track guidance on the 18Z models here. Again, mostly right now, you have your, your models here. Again, they're very spread out. You notice that the official forecast is kind of lining up with the, the HWARF and the GFS forecast model, along with the TVCE, which is the multi-model consensus guidance and the TVCA, which once again is the multi-model consensus. The official forecast from the National Hurricane Center does take this pretty close here to the multi-model consensus and uh, is off towards the left of uh, models like the HMON and uh, the uh, TABM, which is the medium convection tab model. Uh, so these will kind of be prevailing. You notice that westerly trend throughout the next 24 before finally turning it take to the north. Now again, what's going to happen here, that's the island of Bermuda right there. Now this will likely turn either just before or just after Bermuda. Now Bermuda may not take a direct impact from this, but still be close enough to bring some impacts, showers and thunderstorms, gusty winds, etc. So obviously for folks there in the Bermuda Island, you need to be monitoring the progress of this as it could bring impacts over the next several days and could be near hurricane intensity. So just in case that there is something to be monitoring or is something of worthwhile that's going to be moving up towards the Bermuda area, it is uh, worth kind of just monitoring the progress of that if you do live up there. As with Tropical Storm Renee, again, most of the models do continue to take this up and away and out to sea, although there is some models that do maybe try to curve it a little bit more off towards the west, kind of meandering in this general vicinity. Again, this is not expected to be land concern and would be very several, several days away from having any potential threat. Uh, but the current expectation is this should just turn out to sea and be of no significant concern. Now, the reason why that's happening here, if we look on the GFS forecast, this is the 500 millibar anomalies here uh, at 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. And all these darker reds here, that's your uh, ridge, that's your deep uh, ridge across the North Atlantic right now. And conversely, these blue colors, that's your troughiness over the central and midwestern United States at the moment. 
So we can see what we have right now is a pretty strong North Atlantic Ridge, but we also have an upper trough, uh, upper tropical, a tropical upper tropospheric trough, a tut future across the North Atlantic Basin. And that is causing some vertical wind shear right now for Paulette. Again, if we can kind of look here, this is the 200 millibar winds way up in, in the top here of the atmosphere. Again, this is our low future right here. That is the center, if you will, of this broad upper level uh, disturbance, upper level low. Now, this upper level low, though, has uh, it, it's basically causing a large shearing factor and it has a large area of influence all the way down into the tropical Atlantic. And you can see here that on the 200 millibar winds here from the GFS, the winds are right now coming out of the southwesterly, south to southwesterly direction. And if we kind of step this forward here with time, we'll, we'll step this forward to hour 30, and you can see that the southwesterly shear only continues to deepen here into roughly about 30 knots over top of our storm. And now you notice though with Renee, we have a large upper level anticyclone that is around our storm. This is helping to ventilate outflow basically in all directions. Now, the one problem here with Renee that would likely prevent rapid intensification besides the lack of any inner core right now is it's not parked directly underneath that upper level low and this uh, upper level anticyclone, which actually would help to induce a little bit of easterly shear. And we can kind of see that here on the model that there is some easterly shear. If we take a look here, though, at uh, Paulette and what's going to be happening here with Paulette uh, over the next several days, you notice that what we have actually kind of occurring is about 30 knots of shear at the 850 to 200 millibar levels of the atmosphere. And if you look here on the wind plots, this is basically all of the flow at the bottom and this is flow at the top here. So what you're getting at the surface is a lot of westernly flow here at the surface in, in the atmosphere. You're getting a lot of westernly flow. So the weaker that Paulette does get, at least in the short term, it's going to actually have a time of westernly movement. And that's why, once again, we're expecting a little bit of a westernly jog over the next several days. But you go up to here, the tops of the atmosphere, you're getting a more east and north uh, kind of component with the winds. And what this is actually going to help to do is this would basically help to induce a stronger Paulette to move further off towards the north. So you're getting a little bit more of that northerly component in the very tops of the atmosphere, which would help a stronger Paulette to move more north and subsequently then miss Bermuda. However, 30 knots of vertical wind shear is pretty strong at the moment and precipital water values are not all that high, uh, which means that dry air entrainments are going to be a problem here. However, if we go forward out here to hour 90, this is 90 hours out from now, uh, and this is by Sunday here on the model, the GFS does depict that the shear might be out of now the southeasternly direction. So this does look to have at least some shear from the model. Now, part of it is actually coming from Renee's outflow. Uh, it does appear that part of it is actually coupled to Renee's outflow. So the model here is depicting Renee's outflow causing uh, maybe some shear being impinged also on uh, what is now Paulette. And again, that is going to be the biggest difference here. You also notice that there's an upper level anticyclone sitting to the south here across uh, just to the northeast of the Turks and Caicos. So this is going to depend again a lot heavily on where our storm is at this time because if it can find a pocket of less vertical wind shear, it is possible that this may have a time to intensify uh, maybe even at a quicker rate. Uh, but again, by and large, a stronger Paulette is wanting to move more off towards the north and east. Uh, because of this flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So, you know, a lot is going to depend on how weak that Paul, that the shear is able to cause Paulette to get. And again, if the south and southwesterly shear uh, does not let Paulette get significantly weaker, you know, maybe down to tropical depression status, 
we will probably see a storm that does end up kind of favoring reintensification beyond days four and five somewhere out in this vicinity but exactly where right now remains the biggest question it's going to be pretty hard to actually determine where this thing is going to go uh, within the five-day realm if you look here on the european forecast here this is the 12z model again you've got your big high pressure ridge sitting across the north atlantic basin right now but you also have this upper level low again this is what right now what is causing all of this shear to be impinged on tropical storm paulette now as we go for uh throughout time we get this ridge to kind of break down we have a big trough that's coming across from the mid-latitudes and the Canadian region, dipping down through the Canadian Maritimes and Newfoundland, and now out across the far North Atlantic Basin. This also uh, causes this upper level low right here, you can see how it kind of retrogrades uh, off to the southeast near the, can uh, the, near the Canary and Azor Islands. Now, after this time, you can see that we have a pretty big weakness in this ridge uh, all throughout here. And again, this remains the biggest question because if Paulette is a stronger storm, that weakness is going to be realized and the storm is going to start to make its way on out to sea beforehand. Uh, but as you can see here in the model field, this ridge does start to build back in at about five days. And only now is Paulette trying to reintensify into a more formidable tropical cyclone. So as such, this goes near or just over Bermuda. And we also get a new tropical wave that develops probably into a tropical storm here coming off at a little bit lower of a latitude. Now, again, eventually this trough up here should uh, be the one that's going to capture Paulette again and then take it on its final ride out to sea. But again, we can't necessarily guarantee that this is going to be the solution. Again, we've seen over the last few runs here how the models have been handling uh, the storm. First of all, they didn't even have Paulette. So now that they finally have it initialized and they have the troughs in a very different position here at five days out. And you can see here at hour 144, this trough coming from the Canadian, uh, the Canadian uh, Maritimes, basically, and just north of there, amplifies as, as it heads across the northeastern United States and digs in. That trough amplifies and is what is now going to be responsible for, once again, breaking down this ridge and then carrying our storm on out to sea. Now, again, these troughs, uh, now that it is getting into that time of the year, these troughs should come about every five to six to seven days or whatever. So, you know, sometimes you are going to have a storm that does miss that trough. And again, the bottom line is the uncertainties uh, at and beyond five days uh, is very uncertain because if that ridge does not break, you're going to get a storm that moves a little bit further off towards the west before recurving. Now, of course, right now our odds of having a recurving cyclone is pretty good at the moment because of the general pattern that we're in. But again, we'll have to watch for land concerns to Bermuda over the next several days or so. All right. Well, I hope that was informational and I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am on Patreon at, uh, you know, and you guys can see that down in the description down below. I thank each and every one of you uh, for your support. That really means a lot to me. And again, uh, if you guys want to see kind of what's going on here, you guys can see everything that we're doing. And I do greatly appreciate all of you guys for supporting that. All right. Well, that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys some more tomorrow morning. Stay safe, everyone. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.